Hello, I'm Susan Raytai Lane with the MIT App Inventor Development Team, and I'm going to talk to you about screens. You can think of a screen as sort of like a window in a desktop app. It's the blank surface on which you build a user interface. This talk is not an introduction to opening and closing screens. I'll provide links to more information at the end. Screens are an advanced feature in App Inventor that are often misunderstood. We see a lot of panicked questions on our community forums about apps that were working fine and then stopped loading. Most of these turn out to be too many screens. Screens require a lot of resources, and we recommend that you never use more than 10. The App Inventor designer will warn you when you attempt to create more than 10 screens. Here I would like to walk you through a couple of examples of effective uses of screens. First, I'd like to show you Boston Tour Guide which is an app in our curriculum. Here you can see you have four markers on different areas of interest in the Boston area. If you short tap on one of these markers, you can see a small pop-up with a small amount of information. This is handled using the marker components enable info box, which you see here. Then if you long tap, you can move to a separate screen with an image of the location and some more detailed description of that location. Then you can click a gallery button where you can take pictures of the location using the phone's built-in camera and you can browse through pictures you have previously taken. What we want to talk about here is the location screen. So one way you might be able to design this application would be to create a screen for each one of these locations marked by the map pins. But if you created a larger, less example, more functional app around this design, you could end up with 20, 30, 40 different pins. Uh, at that point, you're looking at far too many screens for an App Inventor app application. It might surprise you to look and see that this app is actually only using three screens. We can do this by using the same screen for every pin and just passing different information to the screen so that it can show uh, so that it can display the specialized information. So if we look here, um, we can see that we have four long click events, one each for each of the markers on the screen. Each of these markers calls location screen, so it calls the same screen here, location screen, but with a different string. This is using the open another string with start value, which is a fairly straightforwardly named block in the uh, control built-in blocks menu here. This allows you to pass one item along to the screen that you're opening up. In this case, we are passing a string. You might be able to pass a uh, list or a more complicated object, depending on what you wanted to do with these screens. Now, if we take a look at the location screen, you can see that it defines three different lists here. The first list contains the name of each location. The next, the pictures list, contains the file name of each image that has been uploaded. And as you can see, here in our media manager, we have those four images. And then we have the descriptions list, which contains the longer detailed uh, description strings that you see here as under charles.media. In each of these lists, the uh, items appear in the same order. The first item is always for MIT. The second item is always for Charlestown Navy Yard. That allows us to use the same index against all three lists. So here, we can see that we first pull that start value that we uh, passed from screen one and we use the index and list block in the lists in the lists menu 
and we use that to look up the start value and produce an index. In this case, we're using Charlestown Navy Yard, so we should get a 2, because that 2 is the index in the locations list. We then use that index to look up the location name, the longer description, and the image, and we build this screen dynamically. If you take a look here, you can see that what we have on the screen design has no particular details. We have an empty description label, we have an empty label for the location name, we have an empty image. All of these things are defined at runtime in the initialize event. This allows you to define a single screen that can be used for essentially an unlimited number of markers in this particular example. One way that you might expand on this for a larger application would be to employ TinyDB. Here's storage. You can see TinyDB. This would allow you to create a single data store that combines the names of locations with descriptions and image file names so that you don't need to create these lists, which could get much longer. Uh, another thing that you might be able to do to expand this a little more would be to look at the any component. Here you can see we have any components, which, which are generic components to handle an entire type of component. But you'll notice that there is an any component long click event, and that is going to contain a, a value component, which would be the actual component that had the long click. So you can uh, could create an option here, so that you could create an option here where you passed the component itself to the screen, or just the component's name. You can use the name or title if you wanted to continue to pass a string. And now you have a single event that has handled everything that the previous four events were handling. But these are just options for uh, expanding the functionality that we already have. So here we have seen how to create a single screen that shows different information based on based on some action by the user. Another example I would like to show you involves getting the impression of having many screens without actually having any screens at all. For this, I have created a little example application of my own, and I call that application the Adorable Animal Gallon. Here you see we have three buttons, kitty, puppy, hedgehog. If you tap each of these buttons, you get a different image and you get a different description text. And here we can see in the example, we have the image, we have the label. Now, this looks like it is opening and closing screens, but it's actually not using any screens at all. I'm using layouts, in fact. This here is a vertical layout and it contains three vertical layouts. So vertical layouts inside vertical layouts. Each of these layouts has a visible parameter. Now, once the visible parameter is turned on and off, you can see everything inside the vertical arrangement goes away. You can use this then to create any number of virtual screens that are made visible and invisible instead of opening and closing. Here you can see in the blocks, I have a click event for each of our buttons, and each of those click events sets the desired screen to true and the undesired screens to false. So here we have button kitty, and button kitty sets the kitty screen, which is actually a uh, vertical arrangement to visible and the puppy and hedgehog screens to invisible. You can get very detailed 
with this sort of virtual screen design. And one advantage to creating the screens in this virtual layout manner is that, that there are no issues involving passing data from one screen to another. All of the information is available to all of the arrangements. This can simplify things, though, as we can try making visible all of our screens, you can see that it can also get pretty large, and that in itself can sometimes get unwieldy. So what kind of implementation you use for opening and closing parts of your user interface is dependent upon the kind of information you are looking to display. I hope this demo has given you a few ideas of how to use screens in your project without exploding the size of your app. Good luck.